I am a firm believer in getting the basics right. That is why, though I don't have a PhD in machine learning, I am not an artificial intelligence model creator, but still, at least I try to understand these basic fundamental concepts which we come across in our day-to-day -day working life with these artificial intelligence models and machine learning concepts. I routinely fine-tune these models by using different methods. So that is why when Philip Schmidt of Hugging Face shared these tips to supervise fine-tune a model, I just wanted to discuss it with you and share whatever little I know as what exactly is meant by all of these tips. Because if you read through them until and unless you are aware of what exactly all of these mumbo jumbo means like uh, what is gradient, what is Adam W, what is LORA and then what is 2E-5. If you don't know it, there is no point in looking at it and um, you know it would be of no benefit. So that is why in this video I am going to try to explain each and every one of these terms in detail. So hopefully it would be helpful and if I get something not uh, clear enough let me know in the comments and I'll try again. So let's get started. So from the top. So what is happening here is these are the tips 10 of them shared by Philip which can help you in uh, doing the supervised fine tuning of your large language models. So whenever you are starting to train or supervised fine tune a model then you should be setting all of these configuration and parameters. Supervised fine tuning is a machine learning technique used to adapt pre-trained language models or base models to a specific task or data set which could be your own custom company data set, your personal data set. It involves adding a new output layer on top of the pre-trained model and training the entire neural network on a labeled data set related to the target task. This process adjusts the model weight to fit the new task leveraging the knowledge gained from the pre-training phase. First tip is start with three epochs. So one epoch represent a single pass through the entire training data set. It's a measure of the number of times the model sees the training data during training. So here we are beginning with a small number of training epochs which is three to quickly adapt the pre-trained model to your specific task. This initial phase helps the model adjust to the new data set and output layer. You can always increase the number of epochs later if needed. Second is LR to E5 with a cosine schedule and 0.1 warm up ratio. First, learning rate or LR, this determines how quickly the model learns from the training data. A high LR can lead to fast convergence but may also cause oscillations while a low LR can lead to slow convergence but more stable training. So you have to find a balance. Then another term is cosine schedule. A cosine schedule is a learning rate schedule that follows a cosine curve, gradually decreasing the LR over time. And then we have warm-up ratio. The warm-up ratio determines the initial increase in LR or learning rate or during the warm-up phase, helping the model adapt to the new task. So the tip is to set the initial learning rate LR to 2E5 which is very common value for many LLMs by the way and also use a cosine schedule to gradually decrease the LR over time helping the model converge to a better minimum. The point 1 warm up ratio ensures a smooth increase in this learning rate during the initial training phase prevent, preventing sudden jumps. It is all very smooth slow but steady and that ensures the model's quality. Third tip is apply packing to combine samples up to sequence length 2048. Packing combines multiple samples into a single sequence, reducing padding tokens and increasing the effective batch sizes. So what this technique does is it reduces memory usage, it increases the number of tokens processed per batch and it improves batch normalization. 
Packing is primarily a technique that combines multiple samples into a single sequence, which reduces padding tokens and increasing the effective batch size. Sequence length represents the maximum number of tokens in a single sequence. So they have given this value here. For example, you should be setting batch size, uh, the next one I mean, the fourth one, that we should be setting the global batch size of 256 by 512. So which, what it means is that uh, batch size should be 16 per device. So batch size represents the number of samples processed together as a single unit during training. A larger batch size can improve training efficiency, but it requires more memory. Then another concept being used here is this gradient accumulation or grad underscore ACC. Gradient accumulation is a technique that accumulates gradients from multiple smaller batches, reducing the memory footprint and allowing for larger effective batch size. So you need, uh, you can experiment with different global batch sizes to find the optimal value for your setup. And that is where these values help a lot because you have a starting point. Remember that a larger batch size can improve training efficiency, but it may require more memory and computational resources. Whereas gradient accumulation that helps reduce the memory footprint by accumulating gradients from smaller batches. I have used the word gradient multiple times. A gradient is a measure of how much each model's parameter contributes to the error, helping the model learn and adjust its parameter to improve performance. It is like a change guide that tells the model which direction to move its parameter to reduce the error and get closer to the correct solution. So in order to explain it more simple words, for example, uh, you provide a model an input like 2 plus 2. First type model says that 2 plus 2 is equal to 3. So there is error. And then with the help of gradient, model adjusts its weight to reach to the correct answer which is 4. And then how quickly model does it is your learning rate. And the whole thing where uh, gradient um, loss decreases and that is where your performance improves at a very, very high level, by the way. Okay. So now we also know what exactly is meant by this batch size and gradient accumulation. Number fifth is flash attention. So Philip is saying that use flash attention V2 with BF16 and TF32. Now, flash attention V2 is an optimized attention mechanism for large language models. It provides faster and more efficient computations. Using BF16 or Bfloat16 and TF32, which is TensorFloat32 data types, that accelerates calculations and reduces memory usage because they require less precision than the default Float32 type. So basically what it is doing it, it is providing faster and more efficient computation and it requires less precision. Hence, we don't need that much memory. Then we have number six, enable gradient checkpointing to save memory. Gradient checkpointing stores only the gradients of the model's parameter at specific intervals. Rather than storing the entire model state, this technique helps conserve memory and reduce the risk out of memory errors, especially when you're dealing with large, huge models and you don't have many GPUs. So gradient checkpointing only stores gradients of the model's parameters at specific intervals, reducing memory usage. Then at the number seven, we have opt for AdamW, Torch Fused, and then which is 10% speed up or AdamW Torch. So these are the different optimizer and AdamW is the most uh, famous one and most accurate one out of the lot. So it is telling us that choose either AdamW Torch Fuse or Adam Torch Optimizer because they are the optimized version of AdamW algorithm and I totally agree with that. And from the experiments, I can tell you that AdamW provides at least 10% more uh, optimization.
and then we have uh, deep speed and fstp so philip is saying that consider using either deep speed or fstp fstp is fully sharded data parallel for distributed training because both of these frame frameworks are well suited for large scale llm training and both offer efficient parallelization and communication mechanism enabling you to scale your training to multiple gpus and machines at number nine it is saying that low rank adaptation or lora technique is always great because it allows for faster training iterations with reduced computational resources and lora updates only low rank of approximation of models weights resulting in faster training times and lower memory usage and i already have covered lora in great detail in few of my other videos and lastly he is from hugging face and he is suggesting sft trainer from hugging face but to be fair it is really good because well, sft trainer is uh, um, from the transformers library and it is it really streamlines and enables efficient fine tuning of llms i have used it quite a lot of time works like a charm and to you know more importantly it makes it really easy to implement and experiment with different training configurations and hugging face has already released auto train and a lot of other good tools so i would highly suggest just search the channel with auto train auto train configs and because they are also quite easy i would add these two uh, at top of these 10 tips from philip so that's it guys i hope that you enjoyed it let me know what do you think if you have any other tip feel free to share if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel and if you're already subscribed then please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching